All right, greetings everyone. My name is Ryan Groney. I am a former United States Marine. And uh, that's how I usually introduce myself. Um, if you want to know um, more about me, more about my story, um, go ahead. You can check out some of my other videos on YouTube and my YouTube channel. Um, the um, War on Diabetes is a classic. So I would recommend you start there. Um, if you if you like what you hear today in this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Um, check me out on Twitter, Twitter at Grony Ryan. And I'm going to go ahead and um, if you want to support the work I do, I'm going to leave a link in the description uh, to my PayPal. So um, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at. Um, a video that I made a couple weeks ago um, after Alex Jones got taken taken down off of Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of them after he got just summarily um, executed, so to speak. So um, I, I just want to make a note that this was before any allegations this, that this pound me to um, spectacle created, fabricated, and bombarded us with for, you know, uh, three long weeks now. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll go ahead and play it now. We'll, we'll see. I, I ask a question at the end and that's really, we're, we're trying, we're going to try to answer the question that I, uh, that I ask at the end of this clip. So here it goes. And so, and I thought, I thought at the beginning, I mean, at the beginning, I was just so giddy. I was just so incredibly giddy that, uh, you know, and I knew, you know, it didn't, it didn't it surprise me that there was some histrionics. I'm talking about when Trump won. From the left. Some of the people that it was coming from, though, was a little bit disturbing. Like, everybody on MSNBC, everybody at CNN... I mean, that's a news organization, and they were openly, <laughs> they were openly in meltdown mode because the guy that they wanted didn't win. Should have said the woman they wanted yeah, didn't uh, win. But I expected some of that. I mean, you know, even, but I, I figured, you know, the, 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 the left, and the, uh, not just the left, but just the Democratic Party in general, they'll lick their wounds. They'll go, they'll go off into their corner and put themselves in time out for a day or two. They'll lick their wounds, they'll come back out, and they'll like, you know, and it'll go on like before. But here we are, two years after the fact, and they're still like, they're, this is what they're doing. This is how they continue to behave. They, they take down Alex Jones... Okay, just so you know, this video was made after the, the hearings began, and uh, the, the behavior that I was referencing was, was the, the behavior um, at the opening gavel. It started at the opening gavel of the confirmation hearings, um, and um, I, we'll, we'll, we're going to listen to Judge Kavanaugh, Justice Kavanaugh, here in a second, and he'll be able to flesh that out for us a little bit about his characterization of that behavior. So here goes. But here we are two years after the fact, and they're still like, they're, this is what they're doing. This is how they continue to behave. They, they take down Alex Jones because they don't like what they hear from him. And they, they don't, they, that's not censorship to them, but then they, they pay protesters, quote unquote protesters, to disrupt a, a, a Senate hearing, a Senate committee hearing. Oh, that's free speech, they say, but this isn't. <laughs> so, I mean, I just like, you guys need to fucking, I don't know, you guys. I just don't know anymore. But, um, I mean, this is what I think is going to happen. I think if Trump, <laughs> if they don't win this election outright, uh, coming up, 
then, then, they, then they're like, that'll just enrage them even more, and then, then they'll have to like go at it, come at it some other way. But they're determined. They are determined no matter what <laughs> to take Trump out. So we have to be prepared for that. We have to make sure that they don't take this election. It's about us. Okay? That's what Trump this said. This is the way it ends. This is the way it ends. Okay. I want you guys to hear that again. I'm sorry I interrupted myself. What? To take Trump out. So we have to be prepared for that. We have to make sure that they don't take this election. Okay? Because, I mean, if this is the way it ends, this is the way it ends. Do I get an amen to that? Okay, we were, fu we were fucking tired of that <laughs> shit. With Obama and the fucking Democrats and their fucking, their, their failed utopia bullshit promises about how, oh, if we just turn everything over to the government and then the, the, then the, the United States government turns everything over to the United Nations or whatever, then like all of a sudden like there won't be any problems anymore. We were done with it. Okay, we were done with the uh, we were done with the Affordable Care Act because it drove the price of health insurance to a completely unaffordable level. And the only people the only people that was that it became affordable for were the fucking bums. And I don't know, guys. I don't know. You lost. You lost. lost election. Are, are, are that has consequences. Like this. I want you guys to hear that that again there too. And I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know. You lost. You lost an election. Are are, are you going to continue to behave like this? All right, let's see. This is Judge Kavanaugh. Justice Kavanaugh. Man, I keep messing that up. Mm, Justice Kavanaugh. I do love calling him that. Hmm. Just like I like calling the Donald President Trump. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Feinstein, members of the committee, thank you for allowing me to make my statement. You're welcome. I wrote it myself yesterday afternoon. You hear that? No one has seen a draft huh. or it except for one of my former law clerks. One of them. This is my statement. <laughs> Less than two weeks ago, Dr. Ford publicly accused me of committing wrongdoing at an event more than 36 years ago when we were both in high school. I denied the allegation immediately, categorically, and unequivocally. All four people allegedly at the event, including Dr. Ford's longtime friend, Ms. <laughs> Kaiser, have said they recall no such event. Hello? Longtime friend, Ms. Kaiser said under penalty of felony that she does not know me and does not believe she ever saw me at a party ever. Hmm. Here is the quote from Ms. Kaiser's attorney's letter. Hmm. Quote, simply put, Ms. Kaiser does not know Mr. Cavanaugh, <laughs> and she has no recollection of ever being at a party or gathering where he was present with or without Dr. Ford. <laughs> End quote. Think about that fact. Think about it. The day after the allegation appeared, I told this committee that I wanted a hearing as soon as possible to clear my name. <laughs> I demanded a hearing for the very next day. Demanded it. Unfortunately, it took the committee 10 days. 10 long to days. This hearing. In those 10 long days, mm. as was predictable, and is that we all predicted? My family and my name have been totally and permanently destroyed. 
by vicious and false additional accusations. Okay, that's not true, Brett. We got your back. The part about the allegations is true. But we got your back, brother. The 10 day delay has been harmful to me and my family, to the Supreme Court, and to the country. Okay, that's on you guys. When this allegation first arose, I welcomed any kind of investigation. Any kind of investigation. Senate, FBI, Montgomery County. The committee now has conducted a thorough investigation, and I've cooperated fully. I know that any kind of investigation, Senate, FBI, Montgomery County Police, whatever, will clear me. Okay, so that's where you would take uh, something like this, is to the Montgomery County Police. That's, that's who should have investigated it. But come on, you guys. I mean, uh, what, what party? Where? Who? I mean, all of that. Listen to the people I know. Listen to the people who have known me my whole life. Listen to the people I've grown up with and worked with and played with and coached with and dated and, and drank gone, beer and gone to games with and had beers with yeah and li listen to the women I had beers motherfucker allegedly were at this event 36 years ago listen to miss kaiser she does not know me hmm i was not at the party <laughs> described by dr ford this confirmation process has become a national disgrace <laughs> the Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process, but you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. Spartacus. Since my nomination in July, there's been a frenzy on the A frenzy on the left. I mean, th this is Kavanaugh saying this. This isn't Alex Jones. It's not Ryan Brony. It's not even Donald Trump. This is Justice Kavanaugh. Left to come up with something, anything to block my confirmation. Shortly after I was nominated, the Democratic Senate leader said he would, quote, oppose me with everything hmm. he's got. A Democratic senator on this committee publicly, publicly referred to me as evil. Hmm. Evil. The hell. Think about that word. <laughs> and said that those who supported me were, quote, complicit, complicit in evil. That's us, you guys. A Democratic senator on this committee said, quote, Judge Kavanaugh is your worst nightmare. Huh. A former head of the Democratic National Committee said, quote, Judge Kavanaugh will threaten the lives of millions of Americans wow. for decades to come. For decades. Hmm. Huh. I understand the passions of the moment, but I would say to those senators, your words have meaning. Millions of Americans listened carefully to you. Given comments like those, is it any surprise <laughs> that people have been willing to do anything? Go to any Republican softball practice with a fucking high-powered rifle. To make any physical threat against my family. To send any violent email to my wife. To make any kind of allegation against me and against my friends. To blow me up and take me down. You sowed the wind. You sowed the wind. Spartacus. Senator Klobuchar. For decades to come, decades. I fear that the whole country will reap the whirlwind. The behavior of several of the Democratic behavior. members of this committee in my hearing a few weeks ago was an embarrassment. You hear that? The behavior. Is it? There's your answer. It was an embarrassment. So. But at least it was just a good old fashioned <laughs> attempt at borking. Those efforts didn't work. When I did at least okay enough at the hearings that it looked like I might actually get confirmed, 
a new tactic was needed. Some of you were lying in wait and had... So, this woman right here is Zena Bash. And she's the lady that in his first, when he was getting questioned and during his first opening, his first first opening where it was still like not a, a fucking retard circus. She was like, she was the one that was making hand signals apparently to other people. Um, and she, that, that's the one, and they saw her making hand signals back there and, she, and they were all like, oh yeah, she's a Nazi. <laughs> Those are Nazi hand signals. And she was making okay signs. So... But the one thing that I wanted to point about, out about Xena is, if you, if you watch this, I mean, she looks sad. Okay? This is, this, she, this, this is sad for her. This hurts her. Okay? And that's not his wife. A lot of people thought that was his wife. Just because, I mean, what, what you're seeing from Kavanaugh, that's what a victim, that's how a victim comes off angry that's how victims come off and the people that are that love them or that you know that work with them that respect them that they're sad we're sad about this had it ready this first allegation was held in secret for weeks weeks by a democratic member of this committee and by staff hmm it would be needed only if you couldn't take me out on the merits. When it was needed, this allegation was unleashed and publicly deployed over Dr. Ford's wishes. And then, and then, as no doubt was expected, if not planned, came a long series of false last minute smears designed to scare me and drive me out of the process before are you are you guys have you guys lost your fucking minds do you, do you think we can be intimidated or any hearing occurred crazy stuff crazy shit Things, illegitimate children fights on boats in Rhode Island all nonsense nonsense reported breathlessly and often uncritically by the media this has destroyed my family and my good name. A good name put up, built up. No, it hasn't. Your good name is not destroyed. I assure you. Up through decades of very hard work and public service at the highest levels of the American government. This whole two week effort has been a calculated and orchestrated political hit. Okay, that was not Alex Jones that just fucking said that. You guys. It wasn't Ryan Groney. It wasn't Donald Trump. It wasn't anybody on the, on the right. They, they, they would, you could typically expect to say something like that. Fueled with apparent pent-up anger about President Trump huh. and the 2016 election... Fear that has been unfairly stoked about my judicial record. Ridiculous. Revenge on behalf of the Clintons. Totally. And millions of dollars. Millions. From outside left-wing opposition groups. Outside left-wing opposition groups. This is a circus. <laughs> the consequences will extend long past my nomination. The consequences will be with us for decades. This grotesque and coordinated character assassination will dissuade competent and good people of all political persuasions from serving our country. And as we all know, in the United States political system of the early 2000s, what goes around comes around. Fuck yeah. I am an optimistic guy. I always try to be on the sunrise side of the mountain to be optimistic about the day that is coming. But today, I have to say that I fear for the future. Hmm. Last time I was here, I told this committee that a federal judge must be independent, hmm. not swayed by public or political pressure. I said I was such a judge, and I am. I will not be intimidated into withdrawing from this process. You hear that? You've tried hard. You've given it your all. No one can question your effort. 
<laughs> but your coordinated and well-funded effort to destroy my good name and destroy my family will not drive me out. The vile threats of violence against my family will not drive me out. You may defeat me in the final vote, but you'll never get me to quit. Never. Okay. <clears throat> and we're going to we're going to talk about somebody else who w didn't who they may have beat but wouldn't allow you guys to to drive her out. That's Christine Blasey Ford right there. Okay? That that's that isn't what a victim looks like. When they're, when they're leveling their charges or making their case. I mean, that, that's not a victim. Okay. So I just, you know, I do want to, I do want to tell Brett and, and President Trump, Justice Kavanaugh, um, and, and you know, so, some unexpected heroes too. Um, Chuck Grassley, Orrin Hatch, Ben Sass, um, Lindsey Graham. Grandma, Grandma Collins, all you guys. So we, we, um, we stood our ground. We did the right thing. And, you know, we, we delivered. We, you know, we made it happen. Uh, Leader McConnell, who's really been directing this for, since Scalia died, um, we're basically on the court. We're basically back to where we started with Scalia. We're not any farther to the right, okay? And that's really what—that's what's really behind this, okay? They had the opportunity to replace Scalia with Garland, and we used parliamentary tactics. We took a risk. We stood our ground, and, and we won, okay? And you know, I know it. I know it hurts, you guys. I know it hurts. And, you know, I, and I'm glad that Justice Kavanaugh did get his opportunity uh, to have, um, to, to get his uh, valedictory, to make his valedictory in a, in a dignified setting, setting um, like he did last night. And I, I, I'm happy for him. And I'm happy and I'm proud for us all that we were able to accomplish this. So... And, you know, President Trump, but every Democrat on the Senate, um, Senate Judiciary Committee, at least, should have been at that speech, at this, you know, the acceptance speech of a Supreme Court justice, and none of them were. So, I mean, even if they were just, even if it's just a, as a show of, of good faith and solidarity as an American... And a leader, even though you didn't get what you want, you should have still been there. But you know, after what you guys did, after what you guys did, I mean, that was the way you were going to continue to behave no matter what. And everybody sees it now. Everybody. Or, or a lot of people. And I know that there's a lot of people out there like that. That you're like, they're sociopaths and they're, they're easily suggestible and you can get them to carry out your bidding. I know that there's a lot of people out, out, like, out there like that, but we're not going to let you intimidate us anymore. Okay, and we beat you. We beat you again. We beat you by the fucking rules. We didn't even have to really fight you. And you guys don't want to see what that's like. A real fight with real guns, with people that know how to fucking... Handle a weapon. No, nobody wants to see that. But I mean, you sowed the wind. Now, for all my deplorables out there, like I say, I mean, it's it was it was really nice to see Republicans come come together like that, and um, and, and it was appropriate to take a moment to um. You know, to, to bask in that a little bit, to, to, to have our valedictory, so to speak. And so, but now it's payback time. Now it's payback. 
my friends. And so, but we're, we're going to pay it back by paying it forward. This isn't a victim right here. This is not a victim. Okay, Judge Kavanaugh was the victim in that scenario. But this is a sexual assault victim. This is a domestic abuse victim. So let's listen to her. This is Karen Monahan um, on CBS News um, giving her, making her statement. He met with me at a coffee shop. He is Keith Ellison. That evening before he ran for AG. The conversation went straight to, hey, you know, I noticed that you've huh. been tweeting a lot, you huh. know, and about, you know, abuse and the Me Too and, you know, over months talking about, you know, your own personal, you know, talking about, you, you know, your own same personal stuff about, you know, you and, <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering, are you, you know, are you going to keep tweeting about this? He goes, I don't want to have to look over my huh, shoulder why? all the time, wondering when you're going to tweet something and huh. you know, say it's me. This is what Keith Ellison is saying to you. Yes. Huh. At this point in time, I'm grounded and I know who I am. I have healed for a year and a half. I looked straight at him. I said, I never ruined your career. I didn't choose to do the things you did. I didn't choose for you to drag me off the bed, call me a huh. tell me you hate me. I didn't choose that. He didn't choose Why that. Why speak out now? She didn't. I followed my gut. The gut that I kept trying to push down for a year and a half. She's pissed. That bitch ain't lying. No way. She ain't lying. I totally believe that. Now, um... Is that a, like, is a statement like that a justification for an investigation? Absolutely. Something like that. We don't have, we don't have as much as we want maybe yet, but that's like, that, that, that's enough to, to warn an investigation, I would think, on behalf of the Minneapolis police, because that's where this all apparently took place. So, I mean, that's, that's not, uh, that's not, that's not this. Huh. Oh my God. Have you seen what my GoFundMe account is up to? I thought that was supposed to be for legal bills. But uh, they're, they're working pro bono, so somebody else is paying those, I guess, now. So, and there's been no investigation. No meaningful investigation. So check this out. This is what they did up there. They, um, the Minneapolis police claim that they can't investigate because that would be a conflict of interest. So how, how is that? How could it be a conflict of interest with a, with a public official? Oh, how, how could it be that? Is it he, did, does he control the Minneapolis police somehow? I mean, he's like, he's obviously capable of making veiled threats. Towards, towards people, insinuations to the women that he beats and the people that he abuses and controls. And, and the fucking Minneapolis police can't do an investigation? Oh, oh, yeah, no, no. But the Democrat Farmer Labor Party can. They're like, we need an investigation. Everybody's saying, we need an investigation. And they're like, all right, the DFL will investigate. And so guess what they found? That's the state democratic arm of the National Democratic Party. So they guess what they found out. So uh, guess what they did first? They, they hired a lawyer who is like a donor. A donor and, and obviously a DFL sympathizer to, to do an investigation in lieu of a police investigation. Okay, that, that's, that's, not, that's denial of due process, is what that is. 
And, and these fucking people in the media, they, 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 they with a straight face, they're like, oh, the Minneapolis police claims that, you know, that's not an investigation, and they're not outraged. So there, there needs to be an investigation, an official, official investigation. This is where your FBI investigation needs to be. Okay? Ten long days. And then another week. You guys tied everybody up with this circus while this is going on. This came out, this came out a month ago. This was published on, on August 16th. It's a CBS News clip, and it was published by CBS News. So, so it all, in almost two long months, you kept us tied, out, tied up with this circus, and, and, and nothing. We haven't gotten any satisfaction for Karen yet. This, that's where the FBI investigation needs to be. And you, you guys, Senator Klobuchar, are, are you fucking kidding me? With your bullshit about your fucking, your, your, uh, your little show that you put on about how much you're like concerned about domestic violence. You know Keith Ellison. You probably know Karen Monahan, Senator. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, like, okay, and, and listen, you guys, this time it's like there's no, I, I mean, there's, it's not like we can just let this go. Okay, people have to like, be, there's going to be some people that have to be put in time out this time. And I know that Karen, is like, that's not what she's trying to do. Okay, she, she, um, she bears no ill will towards Keith Ellison. That's what kind of a person she is. Or Amy Klobuchar. Um, and she's a, she's a DFL activist. Okay, she's sympathetic to their politics. And, but it, it doesn't matter because Keith Ellison is running for attorney general. And he, like, and he does women like this. People that are, that are part of his political machine. And it, and it gets worse than that. And that's where the FBI investigation needs to be. Not in like this, this clown shit. This Blasey Ford woman. Or Julie Swetnick. Ridiculous. Ridiculous and harmful. This is Keith's first victim. Her name is Amy Alexander. Okay. And he did Amy just like he did. Just like he's trying to do Karen. And Amy's been missing since November 20th, 2006. The last time she was seen was at a hearing that she, she had filed a restraining order against Allison. Okay, now when women 